Hi, Simon here. Today I'm going to teach you about SolidWorks assemblies and mates. <clears throat> okay, so assembly is a collection of parts and a mate is used to define how those parts are held together. So I've got here in front of us a part called um, my box base, which is part of our assignment that we were doing. So I've just got the basic box here and I'm wanting to convert this into an assembly which is when I put all the parts together and make sure they fit. So this is a part of our virtual prototyping uh, to make sure that our parts are going to fit together. So I go up to file, you go make assembly from part, your default templates aren't valid, that's alright, just go OK. OK, pretty much it starts a, a new document, it looks very similar to drawing in a, a part document, the difference is, is rather than making parts we're making an assembly. Okay, so the first thing to do is insert our basic part. And I always start with the, the part I don't want to move, which is going to be the box base. And then later on, I'll insert the lid. Okay, so the first thing is box base. Now, I'm not going to drop it on the drawing area. I'm just going to go OK. And it's automatically going to bring it to the origin. So the origin of my part is on the origin of my assembly. Okay, so it's a great place to start. Um, if I just dragged and dropped it in there, it might be misaligned or that, and later on when I'm using um, functions like the isometric view or that, it might be a little bit weird. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Right, now I've got the basic box here. I'm now going to start bringing in some more components. So I go insert component, choose browse, I'm looking for my other file. And what file I'm looking for is my Adreno Uno circuit board. Open. Now this one here, I am going to drag around, and I'm just going to drop it approximately here. Well, where you drop it doesn't matter too much, as long as it's close so you can see. Okay, so now we've got two parts together, so this is starting to be an assembly. Now, what I'm going to use is show you mates and the mating tool, which is up here. And this is how the two parts are attached together. So I'm just going to choose mate. Now what I want to do is choose the bottom of the circuit board. And what I'm going to do, oh, up here, maintenance selection, so the bottom of the circuit board, roll our box over, and I want that to sit coincident, which is touching, on top of our pillars to support the circuit board. Okay, so select the two bits, and then I just choose OK. Now it hasn't shown much because it hasn't really moved a lot, but all you can see is this level here. Is now at the same level as the support pegs. Okay, and you can use as many of these mates as you want. Now, what I could do is I could either select an edge of the board and then say select the edge of the case or things like that. It can take a little while to align it up like that, just using coincident. What I'm going to use is this one here, concentric. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose actually one of the bolt holes. So, oh, go up here, delete that. Okay, so I'm going to choose one of the screw holes. I'm going to go down to my case and I'm going to match it with the corresponding screw hole, which will be this one here. And then I just, yep, it's already gone coincident. There we go, okay. Now, I'm just going to close this for a split second and I'll show you what's happened. So it's only attached by two mates at the moment. One is to say it's touching the bottom surface, and the other one is that those two screw holes are coincident. And as you can see, I can sit in there and <laughs> spin my circuit board around. <laughs> Um, and this is why you often need to add a few mates to get the part to actually stay stationary and exactly where you want it, because if somebody sent me a drawing like this, I'd just laugh. Um, it's not very professional. So the next thing to do is choose another hole, screw hole, go back up to mate, which is the paperclip symbol, and I'm now going to choose another screw hole, which this one's is this one. OK. Close the mating tool. I'm just going to turn off shadows so you can see this bit. Okay, now this part, these parts are locked together, so we cut in half. And I go up, just roll it over. What we can see here is the circuit board is sitting on the top of the little pegs just like it's supposed to. If we turn around here, we can see the uh, turn the other one on. Okay, we can see that the plugs line up with the plug holes that I cut. That's pretty much it. So that was my first mate. Now I'm going to add a second part, which is going to be our lid. So I go insert component, sorry, third part, box lid, 
drag it over and drop it. And if you want to get it, you know, you can position it pretty accurately like this. Okay. Oop. So it looked great, but it's actually at a lower level. So I can actually just grab the part and just drag it up to about where I want it. But again, it still floats and it's not particularly accurate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my mating tool again. And mate, I'm going to go select, select the face of the box. Come on, get her. Okay, select the base of the box. And the next thing I select, oh, coincident. And I select the edge of the lid. And all that says is that face there and this face here is aligned. Okay. Now I need to do it again for this face. And again, I'm just going to turn it over. Because my lid's transparent, it's pretty easy to click through it and click the wrong edge. So um, just be aware of that. Okay, and go OK. So all I've done is said, this one edge here is aligned with this edge. This edge here is aligned with this edge. And I'll just show you, demonstrate that. So, oh, come here. Okay, so I've grabbed the lid. It won't move left or right, but it'll only move up and down because I still haven't constrained that axis. So thinking when you're doing this, you normally need at least three mates. Okay, so one for each axis. Now the next one I'm going to do is going to click this bottom face of the lid. Okay, it's not clicking because I haven't selected a coincident. Oh, hang on, here we go. I've already clicked the top face. There we go. Okay, so bottom face, and I could choose bottom face of that. Or I'll just show you a couple of the other ones. This one here is parallel, which just means it won't roll over on its side or something like that on a 45 degree angle. Perpendicular, it doesn't like because I've already defined it enough. We can set a distance, so we go 20 mil. The gap between the two would be obviously 20 mil. Choose an angle if you want. That won't work because I've already defined that enough. But I'm just going to go back up to coincident. Okay, so that's some of the other mates. There are more advanced mates too. If we wanted it to move or do different things, but again, we're just keeping it simple. So stand the mates, coincident. Okay. Okay, it freaked out for some reason. Just going back to that last mate. That face with that face. I don't know why it's freaking out. I don't particularly care too much. I'm just going to do it again. So select coincident that face with that face. Done. Done. Okay. And that is an assembly. So a couple of parts together, they're mated together, so none of this will move now. And that's pretty much how to make an assembly. So my next step is to go uh, file, save as, and call it something appropriate. I've already labeled uh, another one that I made, which is my SolidWorks assembly. And I just use my um, surname, first name, you know, student ID number, and then just basic case assembly. Choose that again. Go OK, save. Two. Cool. Cool. Thank you for watching. Please come back soon and hopefully I'll have some more skills to teach you on how to use SolarWorks. Have a lovely day. Take care. Bye.